The Wahoo Element Roam and the Garmin Edge 830 cost about the same and do fundamentally the same thing. So a lot of people are choosing between the two of them. I've put quite a lot of use into both of them. So I'm here today to run you through what I think are the most important things to know before you buy. It's all no faff and 100% fanboy free because they're both good. And I'm here to tell you why. Let's jump in. With all that said, let's talk about hardware and the units are at completely opposite ends of the spectrum. The Edge 830 is sleek and stylish while the Roam goes for function over form. Let's go through the pros and cons of the unit starting with the screen and they really couldn't be more different here. Obviously, if touchscreen is completely mandatory for you, then the Garmin Edge 830 is the only option here. And the touchscreen is quite useful on this device because it helps you set up the unit a lot easier than Garmin's with buttons. Not only that, it's quite a responsive touchscreen so you can scroll through quickly. This is sort of a grunty unit so you can can do most of the tasks very quickly and easily with the touch screen. My problems with the screen are that it's too small though and when you have to touch a unit and particularly if you're on a bike moving it can be very difficult to press precisely. It's also completely useless when you have thick winter gloves on because it can't tell the difference between a swipe and a press. That said, it is a good touchscreen. I just feel like it needs to be bigger to be truly useful. Over on the Wahoo, all of your interfacing is gonna be done with the six buttons that run sort of around the unit. They're beefy and they're clicky and they're very satisfying to use. And personally, I am a fan of buttons. And really, that's all there is to it. If you want touch, you get this one. Buttons for this one. The optics of the screen are very different on these two units as well, with the Wahoo Element Roam being fantastically easy to read. Plenty of contrast, not very much shine or reflection. And for a screen that's not actually very big, it doesn't feel small when you're looking at it. On the other hand, the Garmin has a comparatively dull screen. It is actually quite hard to see unless you have the backlight turned on. It's quite dark, so when you look at it without the backlight compared to other units, you can just see it's not a very vivid unit. It is also very reflective, especially compared to the Wahoo. So overall, the screen optics are a walkover for the Wahoo. Wrapping up the overall form factor then, the edge is sleek and the element roam is homely. For those who really value minimalism and a small GPS, then the Edge 830 is the clear winner here. The roam has a larger case to screen ratio, partly because of the cool LEDs around the edge, but also the large buttons along the chin. Personally, I don't care about aesthetics of the roam because it's all in the name of usability and functionality, but there is undoubtedly some charm to the Edge 830's better looks overall. I quite like them both, but just for very different reasons. Waho and Garmin treat the phone apps that manage their devices very differently indeed. Over on the Garmin side, they have a completely holistic health tracking platform with tons of data and tons of features but you can't really do much with your actual device. On the other hand, Wahoo's app is mostly focused on managing the device itself. Garmin has the far better general fitness platform out of the two. And using Garmin Connect is a reminder that Garmin is a large company and it has a large platform of things that they sell to people. Wahoo is a cycling and sort of running, swimming, triathlon sort of company. It just doesn't have the same scope. So there's not really much in the way of general fitness tracking on the Wahoo platform. That might not bother you though, if all you're looking for is a phone app that is an easy and convenient way to manage your GPS GPS hardware, then Wahoo is just a walkover. It's still strange that in 2020, Garmin has not made a phone app that will really let you control your unit. Now that is a convenient segue into the general usability of the two platforms and these are vastly different again. I am willing to risk it all and say that if people had never used either of these units then they would find the Wahoo much more intuitive to use. Garmin seems to have been around for long enough and people have a familiarity with them and they're willing to sort of forgive much of the clunkiness that exists within the platform and has for quite a number of years now. The menu structures are difficult with the Garmin, there's just so many options, so many settings and there's often multiple ways to achieve the same thing through different menu structures, whether it's the main menu or the quick menu, it can just be a very difficult unit to wrap your head around. The Wahoo, on the other hand, is much simpler. The phone app is simpler. Using everything on the device is much simpler. Oh, it's just so much better to use day to day. 
When it comes to maps and navigation, both of these units are excellent. I really think that on balance, it's hard to split the two. Both have very high quality, high detail maps, and both have pretty robust navigation systems to lead you through your routes. They also have great integrations with third-party apps where you can create your routes. Things like Komoot and Ride with GPS and Strava, they're all available on both units. They both have their strengths and weaknesses, so here's just a few little bits and pieces that I've noticed using them. Generally speaking, the Garmin maps do contain a lot more details on sort of general points of interest in the world. And that is something that some people do value. Garmin has been making GPSs for a lot of applications for years now, and you do sort of get that sense when you're using their maps. Wahoo, on the other hand, do have excellent maps and I do really like them, but they don't quite hit the same high watermark as the Garmin. But again, it really depends on your use case. I would be perfectly happy using these maps. I find that a lot of the navigational features in here are a little bit overkill for me anyway. I've noticed with both units that they reroute you in sort of different ways when you're following a course. The Garmin is really quick to tell you to turn around, pull a U-turn, and it kind of just freaks out. And I find that you do end up chasing your tail a bit as this thing tries to reroute you over and over again. It can be quite annoying sometimes. The Wahoo, by contrast, tends to reroute you back on while sort of still moving forwards. It's fairly close between the two systems, but I would say on balance, I do prefer the Wahoo. This thing just does tend to freak out a bit and it's not always very helpful. On battery life now, and Wahoo claims up to 17 hours for the Rome, and Garmin claims up to 20 hours for the 830. Now, I'm not sure how they came to that number, but in my testing, one unit definitely emerged as superior to the other. I don't do formal battery life testing because it's boring and hard to control all the sort of parameters, but generally speaking, I have done a sort of similar test between the two. I've taken both away bikepacking with full navigation on the whole time, the backlight on auto, and really just doing nothing to try and conserve the battery life whatsoever. So with the Garmin, I had 11 and a half hours in the saddle over a weekend, and it still had 54% battery left at the end of it, which is pretty damn good. Over on the Wahoo side, there was a particularly long day I did that had seven and a half hours saddle time and it was down to about four percent at the end of it which is you know actually pretty mediocre there's lots of units that will outlast that and certainly lots of smaller units that will outlast it so a bit of a poor showing there from the wahoo because it is a fairly large unit battery life really matters to you then go with the garmin there's excellent third-party integration on both units, which brings in things like Komoot, Ride with GPS, Strava, Trail, Forks, Relive, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And mostly everything is available across both units with a couple of only small differences. Both units do broadly bring the same integration, so there's not really that much of an advantage going to one over the other. For something like Strava Live Segments, the only thing I would separate between the two of them is that the Wahoo doesn't let you manage the segments on the device itself, whereas the Garmin will let you turn them on and off as a case-by-case -case basis. As I said though, generally speaking, they both work really well with those external platforms and they are both better for it. There are a few other things that define each ecosystem that I do want to pay a small amount of attention to. Garmin in particular is amazing at stuffing their units with way too many features like all of these things. Although admittedly, I do think that Cycling Dynamics is cool data if you have a dual-sided power meter. And Climb Pro is pretty cool for the hill climbing nerds like me. Both Garmin and Wahoo have a range of smart trainers too. So each ecosystem will be good for the indoor cycling enthusiasts. And we are really getting so deep now to be splitting hair, so let's come back into the light and wrap this all up. I know I kind of spoiled it early on by saying that they're both really good, but they really are. Neither is perfect, but I've been generally pretty happy using both of them, so anyone who's making this decision, don't lose too much sleep over it. Now, if any of you are wondering which one I choose, the answer is neither. I bought a Edge 530 when it was time to cough up my own money. It's a really good unit, and I really like it, and if you've seen my 830 versus 530 video, you'll understand why. If someone came to me and said I could have either of these for free, I would probably take the Wahoo. I think it just has the more robust and higher quality user experience. There are so many things that are fantastic about the Garmin, but generally speaking, I do prefer the Wahoo. A lot of that is because it has buttons, but also a lot of it is just the other things that I've said in this video. I hope that helps to demystify the debate for you. And maybe now you know for certain which one you would like to buy. And that's where I'm gonna leave it, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole video. Don't forget to check out some of the other stuff I've got going on in the channel. I have heaps of nerdy GPS stuff. Be sure to ride safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>